Well, good evening, Wimborne Alliance Church family. It's good to be with you again this evening in this short video. And welcome also to those who are tuning in that maybe have been given this link by someone in our church family or perhaps you found it just online somewhere. And so we hope that you're encouraged and, uh, and find hope and comfort as we just uh, spend a few minutes together as outside, you know, there's a nasty storm brewing all around us, all over the world. You know, this Easter season is going to be visibly different than any other Easter season than, that we've experienced. You know, our church family won't be able to gather. Our extended family won't be able to gather. It's going to be very, very different. I'm thankful for the internet. I'd never thought I'd ever say that, but I'm thankful for the internet and the ability we have to interact online. Uh, many of us have learned lots of new things uh, in the past week. For example, my wife, bless her heart, has actually put down her flip phone. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> it's done. The flip phone has been retired and she's taken up a new relationship with a Samsung S10. And today she Zoomed, which was pretty incredible. What is and Zoom? Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Zooming is sort of online chatting with people and uh, a really useful tool. But, but she, she learned it and uh, learning to navigate this new phone and I'm just really proud of her. And so I, I encourage each of you listening, you know, if, if, if it takes learning something new in order to be able to connect with people or encourage someone or just um, interact with friends and family or maybe your neighbors, then just do it. Just just learn it and figure it out and just do it because it's worth it. It's worth it to connect with people. And so just learn something new, whatever it is, and connect with people and encourage and bring the hope of Jesus into their lives. Because as Christians, we do have hope. We have a certain hope um, in these days. And I've come across a principle this week that puts into great words uh, really balanced what I believe is a Christian perspective. And it's called the Stockdale Paradox. And you can Google uh, James Stockdale uh, to find out his story, but he survived being a prisoner of war for seven years in, in, during the Vietnam War. And he survived because he embraced this paradox of his situation. He, and he explains um, his, his idea as this. He says, you, you must never confuse faith that you will prevail in the end. And we, we can't afford to lose that. You must never confuse faith with the discipline to confront the most bu brutal facts of your current reality, whatever they might be. Don't confuse faith that you will prevail with the discipline to confront the most brutal facts of your current reality. This is what we need. We need to never give up hope that in Christ we're going to prevail in the end. We will make it through this pandemic. We don't know exactly what will happen, and in a sense it doesn't actually matter because we're secure in Christ as believers. He's got us. But also to have the courage to face whatever's going to happen, the most brutal facts, as he puts it, of our current reality. So I want to encourage you with that. Don't lose hope. Keep hope. But have the courage to look at the situation as it is. And so we enter the Easter season with Palm Sunday just a few days away. And so I encourage you to persevere in your hope and endure this trial well and even grow in the love and grace of our Savior Jesus. And so I have with me in my study tonight my good friend Ross. And Ross is a man of God that I love and I respect. And he's taught me so much in my Christian walk over the last number of years. Ross, I bet you you never thought that we'd be doing a video in the study when we were renovating it a few months ago. It used to be the youth room. And now we sit here in front of a fireplace. Absolutely had not a clue, <laughs> not one inkling. Yeah. Who would have thought that it would come to this? 
that we're using this renovated study now as a tool to reach the people in our church and yeah. outside. That's amazing. It is amazing. Talk about the wise and unfailing providence of God. And I have to be honest, I would rather come here with my hammer and tool belt <laughs> than sit in this chair, but that's... Are you a little uncomfortable, Ross? I, I am. This is stretching me out of my comfort zone. So. You're doing great, Ross. <laughs> I have to be honest. It's a lot easier to uh, to just show up with your tools and go to work than... Yeah, well, I appreciate you stepping out of your box, and then we're, we're pretty much breaking our boxes these days. Yes. And getting a whole different box, and, and that's okay. That's, uh, that's what we need to do, so we'll just do it. So you're a farmer, and uh, your world is changing a bit too. So how's your week gone, or do you want to talk about it? <laughs> My week has been okay. I really don't want to talk about today. It's just been a frustrating day. Yeah. But I'm still able to do most the uh, the things on the farm. I'm still able to move grain to town, and mm -hmm. things have changed. They've taken the people out of the positions, and the doors are locked, and you phone, and they probe your truck, and you drive in the terminal, and they wave at you at a window to dump, and the checks get deposited into your account. So things have changed, but we're still still functioning quite mm -hmm. well. My yeah. wife, however, <laughs> that's a different story. She yeah. is uh, likes um, to get out and about and do lots of visiting and is highly involved. Yeah, and she's taken to the house, and so she told me that I'm still out, and my my world hasn't changed dramatically like hers has. Yeah. So. It's a bit. It's tough for her um, it's to uh, to take to the house, but she's mm -hmm. she's doing some work with the with the children in the church, yeah. and so we were able to get out and to drop off some some goodies in the care package for the kids, and it, that was important for my wife as sure. well. It was for the kids that received that. So oh, you bet. That's that's awesome. That's uh, well, we take this time, and we have to figure out how to thrive in it and how to how to make it uh, point toward Jesus however we do it and so yeah it was really uh, that just gave me a big thrill to hear about you and Ray going and delivering those uh, little packages to our kids and you know just the excitement on their faces and it's important to know for them to know that they're loved in in our church here yes I would agree so we, yeah. we miss all the little ones in this church. <laughs> yeah, Palm Sunday. Snuck up on us, Ross. Yes, it did. <laughs> so as we approach Palm Sunday, what have you been studying or what have you been learning this week, Mark, as we, uh, as we look to what the Lord did and as mm -hmm. the Lord came into town on a donkey and the yeah. people were waving palm branches and shouting Hosanna. So what were your thoughts with that? Well, you know, usually I'm two or three weeks ahead in my study. And, you know, with all this COVID-19 going around, it just snuck up on me. And so this week I got my head into the story of, uh, of Easter and just thinking about that a little bit. You helped me bring the big cross down a couple of days ago, the one that Johnny made a couple of years ago. Massive, massive cross. Foreboding. When it stands up, when we stand it up, it reaches to the beams in the church. It's it's amazing. And you brought that down the other day, and that really helped actually formulate some of my thoughts about Palm Sunday and Easter time. It's such a good symbol. And along with that, um, Amelia wrote a song about Good Friday and, and she recorded it over at her house I think and sent me that recording today and I listened to it and it, what a powerful song and I can't can't wait to share that next week for a Good Friday but even as I think about Palm Sunday you know Jesus riding into town and all these people are just cheering and everything like that. This one line really caught me. I was reading Matthew, I think it's chapter 21. 
and the question was asked who is this Jesus you know here he is he's he's riding a donkey which was hugely symbolic in that culture he's probably going to the temple uh, in five days he's gonna lay down his life as a sacrifice and uh, when they asked the question who is this Jesus the answer was this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth of, of Galilee they missed two pretty important things um, as Jesus rode into town that day into Jerusalem and I was thinking we we might miss we might miss those two things today too so what are those two important <laughs> things that we might miss you want to explain that yeah I guess I could explain that a little bit I won't explain it all because that would give it away but when Jesus rode into town I don't think people looked at him like a like like a sacrifice, uh, like a priest who was going to go and uh, intercede for them and be the mediator. They didn't see him as a king necessarily, although that was really implied there. They were excited. They're all riled up, and they're all you know, Hosanna to the son of David. But as I was studying, that phrase had gradually become more like, you know, hooray, this is going to be a great day sort of thing, or, you know, God saves the king sort of thing. And they thought he would be king, maybe, but they thought he was going to be a political thing. He, they thought he, he was going to take the hill and they were going to do away with the Romans and make their life better and easier. And as I was studying through that and thinking through it, you know, sometimes that's the way we want Jesus to do it in our life. We just want him to go and make everything better. You know, like we look to Jesus now and say, well, Jesus, why don't you just come? And, or why don't you just speak? And then this whole pandemic thing will go away and our life will be easier. That would be really simple. It, it would be, but he's not that kind of king. And he has a different kingdom. And so I was really uh, I was really thinking about that, the question, who is this Jesus? And then the three words, prophet, priest, and king. And the rest will have to wait <laughs> until Mark does the message <laughs> yeah. on Saturday night so that we can watch it or listen to it, I yeah. should say, on Sunday, 11 o'clock or whenever yeah. you tune in. So, yeah. yeah. That we look forward to hearing Mark's message on the rest of this. Yeah. No, it's, it'll be good. You know, one of the things I really miss about meeting together as a church family is, you know, I miss the kids and I miss you know, seeing people's faces and uh, just the, you can't replace physical presence. No matter how good our, our digital online stuff is, you can't replace physically being with people. And, and part of our service, a really important part of our service, like Martin mentioned last week, is when you pray for us as a church family. And, and we're a small enough church where you can take requests and, and you know, say what we're thankful for. And uh, we can't really do that. Even if we did it digitally, it wouldn't quite be the same because we're not in the same physical space. But I was thinking... I would really like it, Ross, if you would just take a few minutes and just pray over us like you do every other Sunday and just pray for our church family or wherever the Lord leads you. I would really, I would really like it if you'd do that. I'll do that. I just wanted to read. I've been studying through the Psalms in Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear... Though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, hmm. though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging, the Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Hmm. And then I spent some time and been going through Isaiah as well. And there's some really good verses in Isaiah, but this one, I just, I, it stuck with me and is Isaiah 60. Verse 1 says, Arise, shine, for your light has come, 
and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. And I thought, mm. yeah, how does that work? In this time of need, when we're supposed to be self-isolating, we're so far, we're removed from one another. And I felt God saying to me, just trust me. You need to let your light shine. You need to let it be known that I am the Lord your God and not to fear and to put all your trust in Him. That's what He's telling me. So I don't know how this is going to work out. But we know we're in this for the long haul. And we know that we don't need to fear. Because the Bible is riddled with verses to give us guidance, mm -hmm. to help us over this hump. Mm -hmm. So I think we should take some time and pray. Father, we thank you for your blessing. Lord, thank you for touching each one of us. Lord, thank you that we can freely call upon your name. And God, we know that we're in this for the long haul. God, as Mark mentioned earlier, it'd be so simple just to have have you come and, and take away this this virus, this pandemic. God, we pray that something will be found, Lord, so that we can get a vaccination and it can can be treated so that we could overcome this. But in the meantime, Lord, I just pray that you would give give all the frontline healthcare workers mm -hmm. Lord, give them safety, give them wisdom, give them strength, Lord, as they go to work on a day-to-day -day basis. Lord, I pray for their families. Lord, that you would give them just an, a tremendous amount of strength, Lord, mm -hmm. as they know that their moms or their dads are off at work and they could, could come down with this disease. So God, I pray that you would just lift them up and strengthen them. Lord, I think of the essential services, Lord, for the EMS, Lord, for the police, for the firemen, Lord, that go about their day-to-day -day task, and Lord, they're also at risk. And so, Lord, I just pray that you would watch over them and protect them and keep them safe, Lord. Lord, for the truck drivers who are delivering the supplies, God, I pray that you would keep them safe and keep them alert and just help them to, to do their task and to do it well. Lord, for all those families that have been affected by this COVID-19, mm -hmm. those that have come down with it, Lord, I just pray that you would help them to get to gain to regain strength, Lord, and to to get over this. Mm -hmm. And Lord, for for those that maybe have lost loved ones, God, I pray that you would help them in this time of sorrow and this time of need. Lord, just fill fill that void in their lives with your love, Lord. Mm -hmm. God, for all the families that are impacted by loss of jobs, Lord, whether they're being laid off temporarily or maybe it'd be permanently. Lord, I think of small business owners that are struggling with their finances. God, we just ask that you would you would strengthen their hearts, Lord, that you'd give them courage mm -hmm. in this time of trial. Lord, when finances are, are missing out, Lord, it, it can put an awful lot of stress and struggles on in the family home. And so, God, mm -hmm. I pray that you would Give them strength and give them courage and help them to decide what to do next. And mm -hmm. so, Lord, we just lift them up today. And Lord, I think of I think of the farmers, Lord, that have so many uh, things in front of them. Lord, we know that there's a tremendous amount of snow outside. And Lord, we know that spring is fastly approaching. And God, I pray that you would just give them give them guidance and wisdom. Lord, give them patience. God, I pray that uh, that spring would arrive soon and the weather would melt the snow. Lord, it's looking like it could be a wet late spring. And yet we know, Lord, that you're in control. And so I give that to you. And I think of the crops that still need to come off. Lord, and just give these farmers an extra amount of grace and wisdom, Lord, as they, as they go through their task. Mm -hmm. And only you can do that, Lord. And I, I thank you for that. God, I think of our church body here, Lord. And Lord, I pray that they would not get discouraged, Lord, and that they would not get anxious, Lord, that we would have this tremendous hope and this peace, this amazing faith, Lord, to look to you for strength and for daily guidance. God, my prayer through all this is that we wouldn't grow apart, Lord, as 
as we are physically separated through this pandemic. But God, I pray that we would grow closer together. God, that we would pick up the phone and call one another, pray for one another. Lord, and that we would have just a strong desire to to care for one another in a different way. And Lord, I, I pray that we would just grow closer through this whole thing. Lord, I pray for a revival across our land. Mm-hmm. Lord, I pray an outpouring of your spirit. Lord, I pray that people would t- turn to Jesus mm-hmm. in amongst their time of trial. Lord, that they would find you. Mm-hmm. Lord, I thank you for all these mm-hmm. things, Lord. I just ask that you would bless us, Lord, with with all these little details that we can give them to you, Lord. We just thank you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, thanks, Ross. I appreciate you being with us for a few minutes as we do this video. It's one of the things I appreciate about you is you're quick to go to prayer. And that's an encouragement to me and it's an example uh, to me as well. And so thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning in and trust that you've been encouraged this evening as we've been together for a few minutes. I have a benediction for us tonight as we close our our video. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Thanks for watching. And may the Lord bless you and keep you till we meet again. My chair creaked. <laughs> <laughs>